Welcome to the first lesson of the Shopify app crash course for non-developers. The first lesson is going to be all about finding and validating your app ideas. And this is important because it's not enough to just develop something and hope for the best. You need to be strategic about it. We're going to help you figure out where to find your ideas from and how to validate them, how to decide which ones are good ideas that are worth your time and investment developing. If you're not sure what this course is, who it is for, and why we created it, we actually have all the details in our intro video. It's going to be linked down below. You can go ahead and watch that before diving in. If you are watching this video during its premiere, we are available in the live chat right now. So any questions you have during the lesson, just write them down and we will answer everything. If you're watching it after the premiere, that's also okay. You can just ask your questions in the comments and we will answer them once we see them. Let's jump into the lesson. When it comes to thinking up ideas for Shopify apps, you want to focus on two main things for the merchants. The two main values merchants actually care about are revenue and automation. With revenue, merchants want a tool that will help them generate more revenue in their store, more sales, more customers, and a bigger ROI and average order value. These kind of tools are a no-brainer for merchants to pay for, because if you can show a positive ROI, then the app basically pays for itself. And in terms of automation, everything that can save some time for the merchant and will allow him to focus on other areas of the business is blessful. And merchants will be willing to pay for that. For example, apps that collect reviews for the merchants and save the time to actually reach out to customers and ask for reviews will be much appreciated. And the same thing goes for shipping. Anything that automatically calculates shipping rates will save time for the merchant and will allow him to focus on other things. Same goes for support and other automation tools. Good examples for revenue boosting apps are any kind of upsell app or marketing app, whatever it is, email marketing, social media, etc. You will notice that a lot of these ideas actually correlate between revenue and automation. And when you find an idea that both automates important business processes and generates revenue, you've hit the jackpot. So let's talk about where you can actually find Shopify apps ideas from. The general idea, whatever your niche is, the one one thing you have to do to find good app ideas is to know where your customers are at. So even if it's not Shopify, you need to figure out where are your customers, what are they talking about, and learn about them and their day-to-day -day lives. So where are Shopify merchants hanging out online? First, we have the Shopify forums. These are the forums on the Shopify website where merchants talk about their issues, about apps they're using, about ideas, about how to optimize their store, etc. This is a really good place to join the conversation and see what they are talking about. Another place you can find Shopify merchants in are Facebook groups. There are plenty of Facebook groups related to Shopify that changes based on merchant types, merchant locations. You can also find Facebook groups for Shopify partners and Shopify developers and learn from them. Another thing we recommend you do is talk to merchants. Invite them for a short call where they can tell you about their business operations and pain points they're experiencing and find no solution to. You can always build these solutions for them. And if they need them, there is a good chance other merchants will need that too. Another great source of info can be the Shopify App Store and the Shopify API. Shopify regularly updates their API options and open new APIs for app developers to build new solutions for. And usually it comes with new categories on the App Store. You can navigate to the App Store and explore different categories, find the ones that are less competitive and build solutions for these categories. The last tip that we'll give you, and we think this one is the most effective, is actually become a merchant. Create a Shopify partner account and build a developer store, you don't have to actually sell product, but it's going to teach you how merchant thinks, how they speak, what they need to set up, and you're going to face all the challenges they face. Once you do that, you're going to see how much easier it is for you to find new problems and solutions. So these are some of our best recommendations of where to find ideas. You might have some of your own, and if you do, we would love it if you share them down below so others can also learn. Now, the next step would be to actually write down any idea that comes to mind. So whatever it is during a call with a merchant, during a brainstorming session, or when you're just walking outside, if you get a Shopify app idea, write it down. This is the first step to collecting all of your ideas and deciding which one to go with. 
And we have a very simple and clear formula for this. This validation table that you see right here on the screen is what we actually use even today when we try to decide which idea we want to work on next. We write down all of our ideas in the app section, and this is where you would just write the name of the app. Under features, you would put whatever free text you want that helps you understand what you meant. What is this app? For example, if this is a shipping app, you would write in the features how the app calculates shipping, what is different about this shipping app compared to other existing shipping apps, and what is your unique value. It is very important that for each app idea that you write down, you think about the value that you give, and this needs to be reflected under the features section. After you have all of your ideas down in the table, you would move on to actually doing your market research. This is where you get down to do the job and fill out the rest of the table. You would fill out the table for each app idea, which would help you decide what to work on next. What you would like to do is to give a score of 1 to 10 to each one of the points in the column and eventually get the final potential score for that app. The first column would be price point. And this is where you try to understand how much merchants will be willing to pay for that app. For example, if you're just adding a banner to the store, it will be a good idea to just charge two or three or five dollars a month. But if you create an app that actually generates revenue, you can charge based on the amount of revenue you generate for that store, which is a better business model for your app. The next column would be a yes or no question. Can your product be a standalone product? which means it's not depending on the Shopify platform. If you look at your product for the long run, eventually you would like to take your product outside of Shopify to other platforms or just to stand on its own, making sure that your company and product are more stable and are not controlled by Shopify. The next column would be marketing potential. This is where you try to estimate, based on the product you're building, how easy will it be to promote your product. Generally speaking, the more visual the product is, the easier it will be to market it. For example, if it's a shipping app and it's all in the back end, it's going to be pretty hard for you to market this product for other merchants and explaining the value. But if it's a cool widget that no one else is building and it's very visual on the store, it's going to be much more easier for you to put it on different ads and market it and let other people understand the value fast. The next column would be competition. And on this column, you can look at it either in a negative way or a positive way. If there is absolutely no competition, it means one of two things. Either you find a gold mine, and if you build this product, it's going to explode in the app market, or no one is building it because no one needs this solution. And this is something you need to figure out. On the other hand, I wouldn't suggest going for a product that is highly competitive. For example, if you'd like to build a reviews app, there are already plenty any of solution that it's going to be almost impossible for you to win and become better. What we would suggest is actually looking for places where there is some competition, but you know that you can build the product in a better way that's going to attract more merchants. Moving on to the next column, complexity. This is where you try to measure how complex it will be to build this product. And you can look at it in both positive and a negative way. So if the complexity is very high, you're going to spend much more money on development. And if the product is not complex, you're going to spend much less, but it's going to be super easy for competitors to copy your product. We suggest for your first product, just develop something simple that is going to be very easy to implement and just test the water with. The next point is loyalty potential. This is where you try to understand how much of a core your product is within the merchant's business. For example, Shopify is a 10. Merchants are building their business around Shopify and they are unlikely to switch for a different product. But if you're just adding a banner to the top of the website, it's going to be very easy for merchants to decide to go to another product. So you want to make sure that merchants are depending on your product and it's not going to be an easy thing for them to move to your competitors. The next point, and this one is critical, is demand potential. We already said that there are over 1 million Shopify stores out there, but each store have its own needs. You want to build a product that will fit as many merchants as possible. And I'll give you an example. Let's say that you want to build an app that is relevant for POS stores, point of sale stores. There are many stores that don't have physical location and they don't use POS. Therefore, your demand potential is going to be much lower. You want to come up with a product that ideally will fit as many merchants as possible. And the final point is scaling potential. And this comes in a direct communication with some of the other points like price, marketing, and demand. 
This is where, once you have the product, how easy will it be to expand to other branches, new features, and new markets to get more exposure and more revenue. A great way to measure that will be to understand how many core features can your app have. If it's just a single banner, it's going to be pretty hard for you to come up with new ideas. But if you build a whole platform to design the store or to do anything related to customer support or handle returns or anything else that have a lot of needs surrounding it, then your scaling potential would be huge. Once you finish estimating all the points in the table, automatically estimate the final potential score for that app. It's important to say that nothing is set in stone. Let's assume that you came up with 10 different ideas and the one idea you believe in most ended up only on the second or third place. It's not the end of the world. You can still develop this product if you believe it the most. But this table will definitely show you the weak and strong spots of each and every idea. It's important to say, as we said in the beginning, this table is a tool for you to do your market research. The idea here is not to think up random numbers of things that you think might fit. For example, you will not see marketing potential and say, okay, I think it's a 10 and just write it down. Your job here is to actually do the research and you can use all of the places we talked about in the previous slide to do your market research, to figure out the answers to the questions that this table asks you. It is not an exhaustive market research resource. It is your beginning stages of doing your market research to figure out which one of all of your ideas has the greatest potential. After that, you will have to do your work to actually validate the idea even deeper, to talk to merchants to understand if this is something that they need and want. You should install all of your top competitors on your own development store to check them out to see what you can do better than they are doing right now. This is a very basic part of validating your idea. If you're interested in downloading this file, we actually have it as a downloadable file with all of the basic calculations we've already created. You can can hit the link in the description box and get the file for yourself. It is absolutely free. You just need to sign up to our email marketing. We promise we will not spam you and get the file for yourself so you can work on your validation. So this is it for lesson one. In the next week, until lesson two comes out, you have the time to start collecting your ideas and doing some basic validation for them. Try to be as thorough as possible. Write down any idea, even if you think it's stupid, you might be surprised to find out how interested merchants actually are in this idea. If you have any questions, write them down in the comments down below and we will answer everything to the best of our abilities. And we will see you in the next lesson next week.